Hey guys, welcome back. I'd like to share with you some results that I recently got using uh, APT's autofocus aid and the comparison of the focal position it comes up with versus what a Batonoff mask would come up with and then comparing the images taken uh, with both uh, focus positions to see which focus aid gives the best focusing position. I got some surprising results. Okay, so this is a video that I took during an imaging session when I was getting ready to test out the APT's autofocusing routine. And what I'm doing is zooming in on a fairly bright star and finding an appropriate exposure setting for the sulfur filter that I have here. I'm moving the focus aid into place and obviously at this stage the peak is uh, <laughs> highly saturated so I need to significantly back off on the exposure setting in order to bring the star saturation down to one where it says saturation here I want to bring that down to one I want to bring this number below the 65504 to be a nice comfortable level uh, for the autofocus routine to be able to properly identify the half flux diameter all right so here I'm got the exposure set at uh, 0 0.075 seconds for the sulfur filter. I'm going to center the star within the little window. The window is awful small because it does move when you adjust the focus or position. Now that I have that set up, I'm going to bring up the autofocus aid. And I'm going to alter the settings. First of all, I am going to use the half flux diameter. That's a better metric than full width at half maximum. I don't really know what the threshold is. 0.05 seems like a reasonable number. I suspect I could go lower. The fine focuser step is pretty fine here, so I'm increasing that to 5. The coarse focuser step for me, I don't know, something around 20 to 30 is probably good enough. The max number of moves is 100. That's more than enough. And then I like to wait a few seconds after the focuser is adjusted to allow the, uh, the system to settle down a little bit before it takes a, a picture. Now you just press the start button and it starts adjusting the focus or position and keeps track of the half flux diameter, but it doesn't really give you any uh, feedback as to what it's finding along the way other than the peak value and the half flux diameter. So it says the autofocusing is finished and yet you really don't have a sense of how good the focus is or whether it adjusted the focuser to the to the optimum setting but you assume that it has and now at this stage I'm going to go outside and put on the Batonoff mask and see how the focus found by the astrophotography tool autofocus compares to what I would get using a Batonoff mask. So using the sulfur filter we're getting we're losing quite a bit of light through here. Five seconds is not a whole lot of time for this exposure but I can use the screen stretch to bring that up a little bit and help the uh, Batonoff grabber better identify the diffraction spikes. But even it has trouble uh, sometimes finding the uh, spikes and as you can see here the spikes are not properly identified so you can just reset the window and try again and this time it seems to find it okay and it comes up with a focus error of 1.04 pixels and we want that generally to be less than one pixel in order to be in, within the critical focus zone so this is actually pretty darn close um, hardly could complain about this too much I'm going to go ahead and make a an outward move of 10 steps to the focuser and we'll see what the focus error is with this setting. So oh, looks like I went the wrong way so now I've got to come back and this is where if you've got any residual backlash in your focuser system it can come back to haunt you uh, and I may still have a little bit left over. So it did go down by quite a bit so that's good. So it's within critical focus at this stage. So the focus or position that astrophotography tool found is actually pretty close to what the Batonoff mask found so that's pretty good and here I'm just playing around getting it a little bit closer but uh, it's probably good enough and that's pretty good there okay so in this particular example the astrophotography tool came up with a focus or position not too far off from what the Batonoff mask uh, would have provided and I think that's a 
that provides some level of confidence. Okay, fast forward now. It's about 4 o'clock, almost 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm switching from the Horsehead Nebula over to M81 and M82. You can see the two galaxies, the core of M81 and M82. And what I'm doing now is setting up for the blue filter and finding an exposure in the star that I can do the uh, use the astrophotography tool autofocus aid on. That one was too low. Uh, this one's a different star and as you can see we're at about a mid saturation level which is a pretty good amplitude now I'll center the star within the little window so in this case I have a focuser position that is 4813 uh, that uh, before any focusing is done that's an important number so keep that in mind I'm going to turn off the temperature compensation here so that I don't get it some uh, random change in the focuser position while I'm trying to image here and now we'll fire up the autofocus aid. All the settings are the same as the as we used earlier in the night, so I can just fire it off and let it do its thing. Now, first of all, notice here how much the star moves when you make adjustments with the uh, the focuser. This window is actually very small. There is the risk that changes to the focuser will push it out of the window. That didn't happen here, but it seems like it's awful close to happening. See, it just barely stayed within. So that says it's done. The image that we're looking at is clearly out of focus, so one hopes that it identified the optimum focus position and set it to a, a different value than what it's set to here. Now I'm going to go back out, put on a Batonoff mask, and then slew over to a bright star and see how the focus is for this particular setting. Now, Castor is a fairly bright nearby star, so I'm going to select it from the list of stars and do a go-to move. I'm not going to use go-to plus plus. I have the Batonoff mask on the scope right now, so I'm just going to tell it to go to this location, and hopefully it's well enough aligned and, and uh, synchronized from the last time it did a, a uh, plate solve that it the star will be more or less in the middle of the view, the center of the view. You can see right now that uh, this is the focuser position that astrophotography tool came up with. So we went from 4813 to 4783. And now we're going to see if the star's in the view. It is, and there are the diffraction spikes. Let's bring up the Batonoff grabber, get it out of the way, and identify the area of the screen. Should not have any trouble finding the uh, diffraction spikes in this case. So this would suggest that we are very far off from focus. And if you look at that central diffraction spike, it certainly is far off from the uh, the middle of the image. I'm moving the focuser out by 20 steps. And we'll see what the focus error is. It's quite a bit better. We'll adjust the focuser one, 20 more steps out. Take another image. And it doesn't get much better than that. So now we'll go take a picture with uh, slew back over to the target. First, I'm going to take go to the uh, the filter wheel and take out the steps, the uh, adjustment steps here, because I don't want it to move the focuser when it does a go to plus plus move over to the desired uh, center of the image, because it's going to switch to the luminance filter, and I don't want it to move the focuser. I want it, the focuser to stay exactly as I have it. Uh, right here with this uh, focuser position. So I've gone outside, I've taken off the Batonoff mask, 
And so now I can use the Go To++ plus plus feature to get back onto the target. There it is, with a pair of galaxies. Select Go To++, plus plus, get out of the one-to-one -one mode. And there you can see the central core of the galaxy, both M81 and M82. A little high up. I want that star there to be back down here. And that's about as good as this mount is going to do. I cut it off to three iterations because there's no point in letting it futz around and try to move it a few pixels. So it's not going to change much here, more or less. Now we'll synchronize it, show it in Stellarium, go over to uh, Stellarium and show that it's centered on the image. There it is, the two galaxies in the field of view for the ED-102. I'm going to take a picture, uh, start imaging with this focuser position, and we'll compare the first image taken with this focuser position setting with the image I got from the focuser position before I did any focusing. Okay, so here are the two pictures. The one picture I got just before I did any focusing, uh, and then the picture I took after the using the Batonoff mask. Now, one of these is relatively out of focus according to uh, focus metrics that we're, we're used to seeing, the number of stars detected and the uh, average half-flux diameter, for example. But I challenge you to look at these two images and tell me which one of them is, is more out of focus than the other. It turns out that the one on the left, which is the image that was taken before any autofocusing was done, either the astrophotography tool or the uh, Batonoff mask, this image is actually better than the image on the right, which was done with after the Batonoff mask. Now, in this case, the focuser position when I first started this was already set at 4813. Astrophotography tool adjusted this minus 30 steps. In other words, it moved the focuser in by 30 steps to 4783. And then when I went and used the Batonoff mask, that adjustment moved the focuser out by 90 steps relative to the starting position. And then when I used the Batonoff mask, I had to push out, move the focuser out by 120 steps relative to where astrophotography tool had put it. So that's quite a bit of difference. This represents um, a 90 step difference, but the astrophotography tool was very close to, uh, much closer to this focuser position than this one. And this one is the one that's out of, out of focus. Let's go over to the astrometric stacking tool and let it analyze these two images. For the image that's on the left, the half-flux diameter average for the image is 4.0 and there are 501 stars detected. In the case for the image adjusted, where the focus has been adjusted using the Batonoff mask, I have actually a worse, at least according to these metrics, a worse half-flux diameter and fewer stars. Now, only just by eye comparing the two images, you really can't tell them apart. So some of this error may just be in these these statistics that are being calculated here, but it is interesting that the uh, Batonoff mask gave me a worse focus position than uh, the original focus position or the one that astrophotography tool had come up with. Wow, this is pretty shocking results uh, after all the work I've done with focusing of late. Um, first of all, the astrophotography tool's so-called autofocus aid is actually more manual than auto. You can't uh, incorporated into uh, automatically to be initiated within an imaging plan. You have to do it by hand, uh, although once you click the run it will find a focus, a, its version of an optimum focus position. Uh, it still has to be kicked off by hand, so it's really not an auto-focusing aid. Um, the aid provides very little feedback during operation, just exposure started, exposure ending, and leaves you with an image that may or may not be close to focus. So it doesn't inspire a great deal of confidence in its results just by the way it works and how little information it provides. Uh, what I found is that in these two cases uh, that I've, I've showed you here, the APT calculated focus or position can be close or it can be pretty far away from what you'll find with using a Batonoff mask. So that's also a bit surprising. But the really surprising thing to me 
is that when I actually compare an image taken with a focus, focuser position very close to what APT identifies as the optimum position is assessed to be a better image based on the number of stars detected and the half flux diameter for the image on, on average uh, than what I got with the Batonoff mask. That is very surprising. I would have assumed that the Batonoff mask gave me a very good uh, focus, gave me the best focus, and that I was just trying to get a uh, an approximate focus using methods like this. So these results are a little astounding. Um, it's really hard to tell the difference though between the images uh, when viewed side by side so that begs the question what exactly is accurate focus and god I don't know uh, I'm getting to give up. Um, I would say for me going forward I think I might go ahead and try using the uh, APT's uh, so-called autofocus aid just because it takes a heck of a lot less time and doesn't seem to provide any worse results than what I'm getting uh, with a with a Batonoff mask. A Batonoff mask seems to seems to uh, give you the sense that it's more accurate just because you can see the diffraction spikes and and uh, have a, a very accurate apparently measure of of the number of pixels that you're off but at the end of the day the image you get when you take a uh, a picture and use um, either the Pix Insights subframe selector tool or uh, ASTAP's analysis, it turns out that the image you're getting with the Batonoff mask may not be any better or may be worse than what you would get with the uh, astrophotography tool. So I don't know guys, I think, uh, I think I'm going to give APT's autofocus routine a, a, second, uh, a second look going forward.